Hello and welcome to a tutorial kind of video where we will guide you on how to set up a vivarium for crested geckos but you could apply this kind of technique to other kind of reptiles or amphibians or whatever if you wish to do so anyway um, it will be myself, Drew and Robert and yeah jump straight into it so this is the vivarium we have it is let me sort this camera out it is about 45 by 45 by 60 I assume. I can't remember. Was it 30 by 30 by 45? Yeah. You can't speak like. 30, 30, 45. Right, 30, 30, <laughs> 45. Exoterra. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself in terms of dimensions. There's an Exoterra tank, uh, which you can buy online from a lot of places. And um, we will just show you, first of all, I'll show you the stuff I've got to go in there. So the first thing you want really is some kind of substrate for the base of the tank and we went for this stuff called coco brick which you can find in a lot of places. It's quite cheap, uh, you just put this block in a bucket of water like we have done, let, uh, 3 to 4 litres and then it ends up turning into this pile of gloop which is a lot of mud if you actually look at the size of the bucket. You do get a lot of mud out of them, so two of them is quite excessive really, but again it depends on what kind of tank you've got, how big it is and blah blah blah. Um, so yes, we will now chuck stuff in there. But what you do have to do is, once that mud stuff soaked up all the water, you do need to squeeze the water out before you put it into the tank. So we'll do that now, and Robert can do that because I'm not getting my hands all stinking. Know what I mean? Yeah, baby princess. And it's also a good idea, because we're drawing the bed for the purpose of this video, to put something underneath so you don't get a place stinking. Because that's not good. You gonna mud out, yeah? Let's have a look how messy this is, that's going a bit. So you literally just plop it on the bottom layer. Keep doing that for a little while. Get all that mud out. That uh, water out, rather. Go to the gym, get some muscles. That saves a workout, doesn't it? Well, that saves me going to the gym. So he's doing that a minute. And then you pop it back in there. And I will transition back uh, when we have filled up the bottom layer. So I just, you don't want to see mud being poured into a tank for the next half hour. <laughs> okay? Bag break. So, yeah, I'll set you here. You're just going to speed up, like. Yeah, I could do. So as you can see, we have filled the tank up with the mud now. Uh, we've left a bit of space at the moment because we are going to be uh, putting the plants in there. And I'll show you the plants now, just in case you want to get the same ones for yourself or wherever. Because, you know, some people do that. So the first plant we got is this, which I have pruned. Um, it is called a Dracaena marginita or something. That's where it is. Only cut, it's only three ninety nine, so it's really cheap, um, and it's got a nice kind of red line into the leaves. I suppose it looks like grass. Though. Um, but tip for you: if you want to prune your stuff, close the door. If you want to prune your stuff, <laughs> then close the door. Go close the door. Uh, if you want to prune your stuff, always remember to cut things on a diagonal kind of <coughs> level, so it's not a straight cut; it's a diagonal cut. It's a useful tip for you for the future if you need to know that stuff. And then out. And then we've also got this plant called a uh, Camiodora, Camiodoria, sorry, um, which is just a kind of like leafy, like a voluminous plant then really. And again, if you need to prune it, cut diagonally in between leaves, not where a leaf is. And then finally, we have a little tiny baby plant called a Hypoestes mix, and it's really, really, really cheap, and it's just a little red fleckled green thing green thing um, and the point of this is it's just going to be on the floor of the thing just to give a bit of volume to make it look a bit more jungly yeah, very humid plants. yeah they like humidity and they like slightly acidic soil which this uh, mud cocoa mix stuff is so that's brilliant so yeah uh, now we will bury the plants in the thing we're not going to depot them because cleaning becomes a nightmare 
yeah, keep them in the pot is a good idea because when you clean in the tank out every few months, it's a damn sight easier to just take a pot out rather than getting all the roots and all that stuff. And it's not fair in the plant, really, either. If you have to de root it every time, you want to clean it maybe every maybe every month or so, every couple yeah. of months. So you're just going to bury those in there. Can I find the position you're good with? That'll be fine, that one. Yeah, that looks not too Then get the bad. stem right in the corner, that'll be fine. Can you turn it more? What's that? Turn them off so the stems as close to the corner as it can be. Oh, that's going yeah, so it gives more space and plus it looks a bit better up at the top. Go. It's got more hanging. Yeah, it's a bit better. Some mid level stuff for the yeah, gecko to climb around. around on. And then just fluff all the mud around again. Fluffy, fluffy. Um, put a mountain like. Yeah, we'll get that moved about, get it all. Should you put it on top of it? Nice and level. And then literally just repeat this for every plant, uh, for every plant that you put in there. Obviously, nice. the bigger your tank, the more plants you can fit in. We've only got a littleish one, so we can only put select amount. It's a good idea to do like a dry run as well first, so you can like place your plants and so you know where they're actually going. Yeah. And um, of, like just shoving them all in and being like. Yeah. So when your tank is empty, just put the pot in and place stuff around, prune it ready. Just you've got a vague idea of like. If things fit where they should, and you can juggle things around before all of this mess gets added to it. Plus, we haven't actually got the gecko yet, so it Makes life it will save a lot of time tomorrow when it does arrive. It's coming tomorrow. Extreme Harlequin. Don't say yet. Be Why? surprised. Oh, you want to be surprised for the people? Yeah, they don't want to. I'm not going to show them yet, and they can see it tomorrow, and it looks stunning. You put in the baby plant. Build this. They'll level up so. We're Ah, oh, so it's on surface. It's kind of equal with the, the level of the plant beside it. This is going to be a long, long video. It's fine. It's not. <sighs> As you can see, Drew has the patience of... I have the patience of a sloth. He has the patience of a shark. I have no patience. Basically. So what I'm going to do is, while he's faffing onto the mud, like a little caveman, I will jump back when all the stuff has been planted in the pot, okay? So, yeah, transition. Okay, so we have put in the plants for the most part and covered the bases with as much mud as we can for now. Um, we will be putting in a archway though, M made out of like wood and stuff. Um, this is the arch, but we'll be using this side of it because it looks a bit more menacing and cool. And it'll sort of sit in that kind of position. So once that goes in there, somehow, it's going to be quite awkward to fit in, it will push enough mud out to cover all the parts and stuff, so it's going to look cool as shit. <laughs> um, the placement to be decided on was like this, because obviously you want to have a nice top layer for him to bask in and stuff, and then you also want, like, preference for myself and Robert, we want it so that it's all kind of like really authentic looking so th there would be a middle layer of leaves as well and you know it's not just bare in the center and then the bottom so we've kind of given her a bit of dimension as much as we can um, plus when this is added into there in a minute it will look cool then and the gecko will have a nice place to run around and be happy <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah I'll jump back when this goes in and then I can talk about some specific things like temperatures and stuff so yeah, transition again. So as you can see now, we have placed everything in the tank. Uh, we have the plants and we have put in this log structure. And as you can see, we've put in a little food bowl and a water bowl. Currently the temporary things, because what we plan to do is uh, we want to get one of those magnetic feeding trays that you can like attach to any level of the tank. Um, but the problem is most of it's from America and the ones in the UK are out of stock so we're waiting on that to happen and then what we will do then is place the feeding tray perhaps sort of on this kind of level here so the gecko doesn't need to travel all the way to the ground to get food but anyway um, in here you can see this kind of thing's got an alcove which I've kind of dug into a little bit so the gecko can have a hiding spot and that's a good segue to a point I need to make um, for geckos, or most reptiles really, uh, you need to have different temperatures in the setup that you've got. 
Uh, for a ge for a crested gecko, you need a basking point, which needs to be about 28 degrees Celsius. Not quite sure whether that is in Fahrenheit, but it's about 26 Celsius. You need a cooling spot of about 22 degrees. Plus, you need the rest of the tank to be about 25. But as this is only a small tank, um, we have this light structure on the top, which is just a low wattage bulb. And what that does is it gives off a little bit of heat, but not a significant amount. So obviously the hotter part of the tank will be near the top, so the gecko will probably be basking up here. And underneath there would be the coolest point, and the rest of it would be normal. So obviously it's not ideal, but then geckos are a hardy creature to look after. So it's not going to be like a pivotal thing, it's not going to die or anything. Um, but yeah, that's it for temperatures. And I'll just leave you looking at that. So, a gecko, a crested gecko, um, it doesn't matter about the length or width of the base. A gecko tends to prefer height. So obviously this one's got enough height for one. Um, perhaps even three really, because it's got a lot of things it can climb around in. Plus a lot of hiding spots, which is another thing geckos need to have as a hiding spot. and. As you can see at the back, you can't see anything to reflections, but um, underneath that, it will lead him into a like an alcove kind of area where you can hide away uh, for a bit of quiet time or whatever he wants to do. And um, yeah, I will now show you the gecko because it has arrived today. I will cut back when I've got the gecko so you can see what he looks like. Okay, so as you can tell by all the polystyrene on the bed, and polystyrene is not my friend. We have received the gecko, and here he is, burning himself away. So I'll show you him quickly now before I put him back into his new home. Uh, if I could open the thing, that'd be, that'd be handy. And if you ever watch YouTube videos, don't mock people doing things by one hand because it is surprisingly difficult. Um, okay, so that's the little guy. Do you want to come out and see me? Use out the man just now. Let me get him out for you. Two seconds. If the camera doesn't fall over, that'd be very useful. Right. Come on, little dude. Come on, in, dude. Come on out, show yourself. So that's our crested gecko. He hasn't got a name yet, but as you can see, he is beautiful. Oh, a little kiss for you as well. Nom, nom, nom. Um. So yeah, he is really great looking. Um, if you can see his markings, I'll show you in better light. But you can see his markings here. He is an extreme harlequin. And he is adorable. Um, I was quite surprised by how sticky their feet are. I wasn't expecting. I was like super glue. But look at him. He's so cute. You are so adorable. We just need to get a name for you now. Don't like your eyeball. That's creepy. But um, we'll put him into his house. If I can get my camera working. There we go. So we put him into your new home. And... Do you want to go in there? Do you want to go in? Freedom? Or do you prefer my fingers? Come on, the bum. Go on, uncle. You're free. Go on, uncle. There you go, it's your new house. We just need to put you back into your place now, so I'll close the doors. Watch your tail. We put you away. And we are going to be putting him on my desk temporarily because there's no space, we're going to be putting him over there. So I'll cut back when he is securely in place. So, yeah, in conclusion to the video, this is the tank now set up with the light. I need to put water in the frame though, and there he is perched in the branches, um, all happy and stuff. So this is our setup. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope we've got some useful tips from it. Uh, thank you for watching, remember to subscribe, like and leave a comment if you wish to do so. And yeah, it's to the little gecko we have to get our name for. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some tips on how to feed your crested gecko. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the food that I use, and it is called Rapashi Superfoods.
Um, it is a type of replacement food where it comes in the form of a powder. If you could smell this, then you would absolutely adore it because it is just it smells stunning. If you can see it's all powder, yeah. But um, it's really great for the gecko, and I'm going to show you how to prepare it, just in case you didn't know. So you're going to need something to measure your scoops with. I've got this funny thing where you can use a teaspoon or a flour spoon. Um, depends on how many geckos you have, the amount varies, obviously. Um, I'm going to use one of these measurements of the powder. So for that I would just remove this up a bit. You open the bag up, obviously, and then you put the scoop in. So you put your scoop in there, you get it out, and you make sure it's level by shaking it a bit and then just rubbing your finger across the top to it's level. Because ideally you want to have a level one. You know what I mean? And then you just grab the bowl, plop it in there, get it all out. So it's all there, that's all. And then you want to have some water, and then the same measurement, get a scoop of water, like so obviously, pour into the bowl two scoops because it works out one part water uh, one part powder two part water so you get that sorted it's in the bowl and then you just get a spoon or something and whisk it around until it becomes like a really like a yogurt like a yogurty kind of texture it's kind of thick and it's still pourable but it's sticky you know what I mean so just keep stirring it it does take a little while, but you will begin to see it thicken up. And if it doesn't thicken up at all, uh, just add a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of powder just to bring it back. Or if it's a bit too thick, add a bit more water. And eventually, it took me about two attempts to figure out how to make it properly. And then you kind of get the hang of it. So you just keep doing that. And while I'm stirring this around, I will talk to you about something else. And um, when you're keeping a crest of gecko, it's kind of a good idea to find out where the guy or girl uh, rests the most often. Uh, so, so as you can see, that's kind of gloopy now, so that's kind of perfect. So find out where the gecko rests the most, and that is kind of near enough where you want to place the food too. So then you take the thing out. Get a little food tray like I've got here and pour it in. This won't look like much at all, but trust me, the geckos don't actually eat a lot. Initially, I used to create this, it was full to the top, but you would just waste most of this, so I just make a tiny amount now and it seems to be doing the trick anyway. So that's all I've got. Um, at the moment, it's still a little bit runny, so I'll just leave it set for a little bit longer. Get out as much as you can because obviously you don't want to waste your stuff, do you? Um, so I'll just keep doing this, get out as much as I can. And that's all I've got. And now I'll show you where I place mine because obviously the gecko at the moment is sleeping up there. Um, but obviously I can't attach the food to the wall yet because I still don't have my magnetic thing. So we'll open the doors, uh, put this food bowl, and I rest it simply here. I rest on that log thing. And he always eats in it in the night time, so that's fine. Okay, so with my gecko at least, I find that he eats mostly... Uh, from around 1 to 2 a.m. and that tends to be his kind of slot. Um, also you need to give the guy water uh, obviously though um, as this is a ground kind of trough kind of thing he's not going to drink from it that often because they don't really tend to go on the ground at all from what I've noticed. So we just put that in here as well. Uh, let me sort this out though because it's really hard to do everything with one hand and I'm kind of shaky at the moment. So you put that in there, just wedge it in. But I'm going to show you a good trick uh, to keep it, how to actually keep him watered properly because, uh, two seconds. So to keep him fully hydrated um, in his most natural kind of way, you want to get something like a squirty bottle like this, fill it with water, and you have to do this at least once a day uh, to keep the humidity up plus to also allow him to drink because they prefer to drink off the leaves and you literally just squirt quite a bit just to keep it all damp and moist and just squirt for ages until everything's kind of soaking a bit it does dry really quick though um, but it helps keep up the humidity plus also squirt around your plants just to keep them watered as well 
Okay, so everything's kind of soaking now, as you can see. And what this guy will do now is he will just literally drink from the leaves, so it works out really well. Um, so I'll close him away. And that is all I want to show you. So thank you for watching. And yeah, goodbye. Yo, dude.